welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are starting up on our little spaniel's face and we're just going to see how much of her face we can bring in now. Um, we will be darkening up this area which we did in a previous part and that needs to go darker but we were waiting to start on um, her face and getting the face in before we went back in and darkened this up. The part after we will be returning to the ear and finishing the ear but as I've said in previous parts, oh excuse me, I like to separate the two different areas so that you get a break from all these curls and we do something that's a little easier to focus on um, which is this shorter area of fur on her nose. Um, so if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe I'd love you to join the little family here that we've got growing on YouTube. Uh, like the video if you haven't already and I'm going to zoom in and get started. So as usual I'm going to come in with my ivory and I'm just going to add an ivory base along the bottom of her face. We really hopefully once we um, have finished this part of the tutorial today we're really going to see this face coming together. So I'm just going along the bottom here um, and I'm going to bring it down here and then we've got a nice area of fur to work on. We're not too far off really, another three or four parts I reckon maybe. <laughs> I say this every time don't I? I had on extra parts, but I don't think we are far off from having her finished now. Once we've got her face in and that ear, it won't take us too long to finish the rest of her. Right, so what I've done is I've just brought this ivory in along this part of her face, along the whole part of this bottom part of her face. And this is the area that I'm going to be focusing on um, today. If I just turn that light off. You can just about see the ivory now along the bottom of this face. So obviously when I've got that light on, everything looks really overexposed, um, but it just makes it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to come in at the bottom of the face first and I'm going to use the burnt umber. And I'm just following the shape of this fur. All along here with the burnt umber. And this is just going to start building up the colours in her fur on her face here. Um, and I'm going to bring it up here again along this corner because it's going to get quite dark here. Going over those areas where we've previously drawn. That's the burnt umber. And I'm going to take the put mortem and again just go over this burnt umber area. I hope you're all doing well. I don't think I've asked for a while. <laughs> I do hope you're all doing well and I hope you're still all enjoying these tutorials. I do have a couple more dogs planned and then I think we're going to start looking into maybe doing a few wildlife pieces, something different, um, if I can find some nice photos. Okay, and then I'm going to take the red violet. And I know that this area here is going to be really dark, so I'm going to sort of bring this red violet down here. On her face. Going over some areas there. Just 
So you can see now how we've only just started this corner of her face, but it's really starting to bring the shape of her face in nicely. Um, and then along the bottom here, I'm going to bring this red violet in as well. So this area here is quite dark, so that's going to blend into a really dark area. So we're just kind of building up this area above the darkness in order to help with that transition. So everything's sort of almost like planning ahead with everything that we're doing. We're making sure that it's all going to blend, but that it's all related to one another, even though we're doing it in different sections. So I'm using this red violet because it gives us that reddish brownish tone. But it also helps with the transition to the darker area down here, like we've got in this part of her face. Um, and then going back over with a burnt umber in this section. Back to the cup mortem. So again, just a little bit of back and forth between all these colours to build up the fur to the colour that we want. Now I know the way that I, I draw takes time and I do slowly build up the layers. So don't worry if you don't want to follow along like this. Maybe you want to press harder with a burnt umber and just build that colour up straight away. That's perfectly fine as well. Um, do what suits you. Uh, back to the red violet and I'm just going to darken here again. Really liking this puppy. She's really turning out quite nicely. It's surprising. It sounds surprising, but sometimes you do surprise yourself with how well the piece is turning out. Um, and then my walnut brown. Um, that's Van Dyke, hang on. Walnut brown. And this is going to just help with this dark shadow that's appearing here on her face. And just along the bottom here as well. And into there. Okay, and then back to the kaput mortem. Um, and then the burnt umber is my final layer here. take my, my dark sepia okay my dark sepia and I'm just going to blend oops, this bit out a bit more and then blend into here just along that bottom edge remember we're going to go quite dark in there but I just want to get the blend and I'm just going to start the blend along here as well because it's going to be quite dark there um, and then back to that walnut brown and blend out from that dark sepia. Back to the kaput mortem. So I've just blended and made sure that this blend is nice and smooth. I'm going to go over that burnt umber ever so slightly. Okay, so you can just see we're just starting to really now build up the side of this face. Um, yeah, she's coming along. We're now going to take the Van Dyke Brown and I'm going to start bringing this Van Dyke Brown down here. Um, and I'm going to bring that up into her face here, which is a bit orange at the moment, but we're just going to start toning that down now with this Van Dyke Brown. The 
I'm taking the nugget and again I'm making sure that my fur is going in the correct direction so my nugget is coming along here not too long a pencil stroke but not too short either remember your pencil strokes reflect the length of the fur and I'm just going to cover all of this area now with the nugget Um, I'm then going to take my uh, Van Dyke Brown again, just along here, and I'm sort of curving the strokes, so the strokes are curving round here. You won't really be able to see that curve just yet, but that's fine. Now back to the Burnt Sienna, I say back, we're using the Burnt Sienna <laughs> um, along here. Cause somebody's beeping outside. Don't know if you'll be able to hear that, but hopefully not. And then I am um, going to come in with the um, kaput mortem very lightly, and then take that burnt sienna again and just go over there. I'm going to take my um, walnut brown and where I've got this darker shadow, I'm just going to map that in now with the walnut brown. And that's sort of coming down. I'm just going to sharpen this. So, bringing this walnut brown in and around here. Hoping we might be able to get her face done. We'll see. Quite a lot of colours to build up in the face, so I don't want to overpromise. I feel like I keep overpromising how much we're going to get done. <laughs> I just need to stop and just crack on and get it done. <laughs> uh, the Van Dyke brown. I do hope you've enjoyed this spaniel, though. I've I've really enjoyed this piece coming together. It's complicated, I do know, but I do hope you've enjoyed it. I've been working on her in between commissions. And the Kaput Mortem. So it's, she's been a nice break. I've been drawing something completely different as a commission. I've been drawing some Dagoos, which I've absolutely loved. Absolutely loved every minute of them. But it's nice to get back to drawing a dog in between drawing some Dagoos. Okay, and then the burnt sienna. So even though we're using a lot of colours, all these colours are sort of building up and they're giving us a nice tonal shift in her fur. Um, you could, you would probably get away with just using like your Van Dyke brown, your walnut brown, your burnt sienna, but I don't know. There's something that I just I love using so many different colours in my work and I love capturing every little tonal shift. Uh, Van Dyke Brown. I just, I have to do it this way. <laughs> this is what works for me. Okay. Then taking the burnt sienna and I'm going to bring this all along the bottom of her muzzle here and start bringing it upwards. So with this I'm kind of just outlining the shape that we want this muzzle to be. We can build on top of the colours if we need to, we can darken areas if we need to, but it's a nice tone to just outline the general shape that we've got going on for this um, part of her muzzle. And then this area is quite a burnt sienna tone. And 
I'm just going over this a few times and it's just going to create extra layers but you can see how light I'm pressing I'm not pressing hard at all and I'm just going to bring this up here so if I move that piece of paper you can see now that we've got the shape of her top lip and of her muzzle and then underneath here is what's going to be like her bottom lip her jawline coming down into the neck and then as we come higher up her nose now um, I'm coming in with a bista which is a lighter coloured brown and I'm just going to apply this along here again I can darken this area up if I need to we're starting out with really light pressure and I'm just going to apply this bista along here everything is light pressure always light pressure Bring that sort of down here um, and then I'm going to take the burnt sienna again into this area here. So, so we've just got a base layer on top of, obviously we've got ivory as a base layer and then I've kind of created another base layer of the tones underneath um, the top layer of her fur, again on top of that ivory. So it's like doing base layer on base layer till we get the tones that we want and then we go in with those details. Right, so let's start building up these tones again. So I'm coming in here first with the nugget. And I can see that we've got like a line which is coming down into her lip here. So I'm just going to kind of follow this line here. And that's coming down into this lip area. And I'm going to use the nugget. Along here. So, um, and then the burnt sienna I'm going to bring in here so bring it downwards so again making sure I'm following that fur direction all the time this is the burnt sienna Light pressure again, just building up the tones in her face. And then I'm going to go over the top of that with a nugget. So it's just a lot, again, a lot of back and forth, but it'll all be worth it. Um, and then the put mortem here. Uh, the red violet, so we've got this shadow, and we're just going to blend that red violet in here. Bring that upwards. Um, I'm actually just going to take this red violet along here as well. I'm just going to blend all of this part of the muzzle in nicely, and then take the burnt sienna again. And just go over the top. Um, and then I'm going to take my burnt umber and bring this down here. So now I'm just starting to darken up this part of the um, lip and sort of bring it along this darker line that I can see here back to that nugget and I'm just gonna run that along that edge like so okay and then back to the burnt sienna 
along the bottom of this lip. Now I've not done any of like the stray hairs that are going over this dark a bit because I'm going to use the um, when we do the lip underneath I'm going to use that as the time to bring the hairs make the hairs look like they're overlapping um, which might I don't know if I've explained that properly yet but um, when we get to that area I'll explain and I, I can show you what I mean um, so at the moment this is too straight but that's fine we are going to sort it all out. <laughs> um, so I'm just bringing in a bit of a medium pressure now with the burnt sienna. Really starting to bring this lip together now. I've then got my India Red and I'm just going to come over the top of this Burnt Sienna now with this Indian Red. It's really just going to give that nice lift of colour to the um, to this area. <sighs> Little mark under there. And I'm just going to blend this outwards. You see we've got a nice like pop of this reddish Indian red and then I'm going to take that burnt sienna again, medium pressure and go over this area now. Like so. Right, now we've got quite a light area here, so I'm going to take the Vista and I'm just going to come along here with the Vista and just add another layer. Now this is where we're going to start darkening up this area of her muzzle again. Um, so I'm going to bring that Vista over those areas. So bring it down here as well. And then over the top of that vista, I'm going to take this Indian red. So next month's tutorial is going to be a Dalmatian. Um, I found a reference photo. It's a nice reference photo. Um, it's side on again, facing the opposite way, I think, to this dog. I can't remember. I think it's the opposite way. I'll double check. Um, it is another side on profile picture. Um, side profile picture of a dog. So the tutorial after the Dalmatian, I think, is going to be a three-quarter look on of a dog um, so that we can deal with the angles of it being three-quarters on. Um and then I think after we've done like another two dogs, I think we're going to have a look into, then is when I'm going to have a look into doing a wildlife piece. Um, maybe a rab, like a hare um, or a fox. I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't quite found a photo to draw. So it all depends if I find a photo or not. <laughs> um, right, so can you see how I've added in these red, um, Indian red tones? And we've now started to get this shape of the um it's like whisker marks uh the whisker lines that's what we've kind of started building up there um i'm then going to take my um burnt sienna bring that along here and blend outwards into that muzzle so when i'm blending outwards what i'm doing is i'm tapering that 
pencil strokes I'm rele releasing pressure as we get to the end of that pencil stroke and that's going to give us that nice tapered look to a fur there that in here as well um actually yeah i'm going to just lightly bring this fence in a very light pressure here um and i'll probably do a couple of layers and then we're going to go over it with the um i'm thinking the nugget may go over with the van dyke brown for a bit more of a brownish tone but we'll see how the nugget looks first um so if i grab the nugget Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks okay. Blending, always making sure I'm getting that nice blend. Um, just going to take the burnt umber. Um, because we want this to look like it's coming down here. So I'm just going to... Use the burnt umber to create that shape of the lip there. And then I'm going to bring this burnt umber over here and I'm going to start creating this darker shadowed line there. Right, okay, so I'm going to start building up the dark muzzle again here. So I'm going to take, first of all, just going to take that burnt sienna and I'm just going to darken this edge up first. And then um, I'm going to start going in with the walnut brown, possibly the dark sepia, maybe a bit of black if we really need to darken it up. Um, just see, maybe the Payne's grey will work better um, to darken it up. Um, but hopefully now, now that we've got quite a lot of this muzzle in, you can see that we've got that nice shape of a head. Obviously, we need to bring in the bottom muzzle, but we've got a really nice shape coming um, of her head. Right, so that's the um, burnt sienna, just a bit of a harder layer there. Um, so I'm now going to take my walnut brown. Um, and I've just knocked my profile picture away. Profile picture. I don't know why I'm obsessed with saying profile picture. Reference picture. Right. My reference picture. And I'm just going to start with a walnut brown. Mapping in these dark shapes that I can see. Now we do have some white whiskers to add. Um, again, you can use the slice tool for this. Or we will use the tape method. Uh, whichever method is... Uh, best for you whatever tools you've got to hand um, and again I'm just going to now follow all these darker whisker marks and I'm mapping them in with the walnut brown and this is just going to really start to darken up this area nicely now if you're struggling to get it to look dark like this um, use the Payne's grey um, to um, help darken up the area or the dark indigo um, the bluish the bluer tones will um, create more of a natural looking shadow than using black we try not to use black where we don't want something to not be pure black um, and here we don't want it to be pure black we want it to be just a shadow of the fur which is why at the moment i'm just using this walnut brown and you can see already it's just really started to darken. Oh. And this is just all adding depth to that fur. So I know she's another long tutorial, unfortunately, like the Border Collie, but hopefully you've all enjoyed her so far. Um, and she's really coming together nicely now once we've got those ears in it's um the piece kind of flies by 
but um maybe maybe i'll start doing the tutorials a bit longer i just i think an hour is quite a nice length for you all um but let me know if you um want the tutorials to be longer than an hour because I could, I could film them for longer than an hour um, but obviously we'd, you'd still be drawing the same amount of time it just you just look like you're finishing it quicker I don't know <laughs> thinking out loud I guess right I'm pretty happy with that so I'm now going to bring in my Van Dyke brow and I'm coming along here now with the Van Dyke just to help darken this part of the muzzle up a little bit more Right, and then I'm taking the bista and running it just down the edge here. And the burnt sienna just to darken here. Um, and then I'm going to take the, um, I don't really want the cinnamon, the Venetian red, I've got the Venetian red just over the top here. I've ordered a new stand um, for my, uh, for when I record so that hopefully you won't get the shaking as much. Um, I'm hoping that's going to help out a lot because I, I do know that the camera wobbles a hell of a lot so I'm hoping that that's going to help you out when I get that um, I'm just going to take the burnt umber and I'm going to use the burnt umber just to help blend out here ever so slightly just any any harsh lines take, take back the walnut brown We've got a few harsh lines, but we don't want it to be as harsh as it is. I'm just going to smooth them out a little bit. Um, and then the burnt sienna over the top. So it is a lot of back and forth, but just building up layers. That's all it is. It's just building up layers. Like so. Right. I think we can start the um, the under jaw, the lower jaw, the chin and that. Because um, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. We may have to come back to it and add a few little bits, but um, we will start with her underneath part, her lower jaw now. So back to the ivory and we're just going to come in with the ivory and map in this part of the under jaw. Um, I probably am going to work on this bit in sections I think. Um, yeah I think I'm going to work on this in sections so I'm going to bring this down here for now. Uh, this area there is darker so um, first off I am going to start with the uh, burnt sienna and I'm just going to very lightly so we don't want to mix these two areas together as such um, this under jaw is going to be a lot darker but obviously we've got burnt sienna on the top jaw top part of her muzzle um, so we just need to be careful 
And again, I'm just looking at that reference photo and following that for a direction. Okay, and then I'm going to take the red violet, which I seem to have rolled off the desk. Um, it's here. The red violet, and let me just sharpen this. And now I'm going to use the um, red violet to map in the shadow. So it is overlapping this part of the draw ever so slightly. Again, follow that for the direction. And I'm just going to So you can see how we've got the outline now coming in of this bottom jaw, just how we um, wanted. And I'm just going to use high depression now with this red violet, bring in this. Follow along here. Like so. Um, and then taking that burnt sienna, and I'm just going to bring that along to that edge. Like so. Um, and then I'm going to take the walnut brown, but we may just go in with a dark sepia because it is a really dark area. Um, we'll see. And I'm coming in with the burnt walnut brown first. Um, yeah, I think we're going to end up having to go a lot darker than this. Over the top of all that red violet. Okay, let's. Um, I'm just wondering what it'll look like if I use the Payne's Grey. So I've just got the Payne's Grey, I may end up just using the dark sepia, but I'm just gonna come in here with the Payne's Grey first. Oh, I'm not sure. I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to use the Payne's Grey to just really darken here, especially along this edge. I want it darker. Along here, it's a bit lighter there. Um, so I'm going to come back in with the red violet. And just blend that outwards to just really darken here and then the burnt sienna where you can still see that ivory showing through um, and I'm just gonna come over that with the burnt sienna which needs to be a bit sharper and I'm just gonna create some of those little sort of loose hairs loose hairs wow <laughs> Keep saying different words. So we don't want this to be a perfectly straight line. We want little hairs that we can see. Coming down here. Like so. Um, and... And 
there right then going to take this burnt sienna and i'm just going to bring it along the edge here we don't want that whiter line so i'm just pressing along the edge here and then if i take that Payne's gray and just sort of bring some little fur lines this is what i mean by using this shadow bit to show that it's overlapping bring these up into there maybe just darken here that it gives that impression that this fur is up and under this top lip um and then we're just going to take the um van dyke brown I'm just going to go over the top of that burnt sienna, just knock it back a little bit. Okay, so you can see how we're starting to get the bottom of her muzzle showing now. So again with the ivory, um, and I've not erased my graphite lines because I know that this area is going to be really dark. So I know that even though you can see these graphite lines now, um, it's not going to stay there it's going to be covered up and be really really dark so back in with the ivory um along here first okay so um i'm just going to take the bista first in this area which is quite light um so i'm going to use the bista Um, and go over that ever so lightly with the burnt sienna. Um, I think this time I'm just going to go straight in with the red violet for now. And again, just create those like wispy hairs going up and under. That's coming down here and blending over the top. Of that but of that bister um and bring in that kind of to about here I'll then go over the top of that with the walnut brown. So this is going over the top of that red violet. And then I'm just going to blend that bit out into that burnt sienna colour there, up and under ever so gently, so and then I'm going back to the red violet and we've got this section here which is really dark so I'm going back in with the red violet first I'm going to make sure that this is all covered with this red violet. Go over all of that with the walnut brown. Now I can see that we really need to darken this area up, but we'll do that um, after. Um, and I'm bringing that walnut brown up here and into this section just to help with this blend. And then I'm going to take the Payne's Grey because I really want this to be dark, especially along this edge here. 
So I'm going to use it along the edge with the Payne's Grey. And I'm just going to darken along here with the Payne's Grey. So the Payne's Grey is really helping us create this really nice dark shadow. It works well with the um, red tones for your shadows, which is why we've not used black. So it's look at how dark we've got all this, and this is without using black. Um, so it's really, really good to know like your colours and colour theory and what's going to help you. Um, because, yeah, that it really works. <laughs> um, right, now we've got a really scruffy edge here. So we're going to take that burnt sienna and we're just going to create this edge um, and then I'm going to take the Indian red very lightly just to almost smooth it off but then what we're going to do is I'm going to take the Van, Van, Van Dyke Brown Van Dyke Brown um, get a really sharp point on your Van Dyke Brown um, and we've got a lot of loose hairs coming along the bottom here. We're just going to add them in now before we come further down here. So I've got a sharp point on this Van Dyke Brown and I'm just going to bring some sort of hairs out. Now remember it doesn't matter if they're not the same as the reference photo. That's fine. We're just bringing in some, some distinction here. Wait. This is what's going on. I'm just following that fur direction here. Going on there. So this is just adding to that detail that we've got coming on. And then I'm just going to bring that Van Dyke Brown into there as I've done that. Um, and then I'm just going to grab the Burnt Sienna and over some of these I'm just going to bring that Burnt Sienna over some of those lines just to help with that blending. Okay, right. And then taking this Burnt Sienna and I'm just going to go over here. And then take the Van Dyke Brown and go over the top. Very light pressure. I'm not pressing hard because we want this to look like a lighter area, even though it's still in the shadow. Like so. So you can see now we're really starting to get the shape of her bottom mouth coming in. Right. As we come further down here, we've got some really long fur coming um, into play. So just going to map in once again with the ivory again I'm not worried about my graphite lines because um, it's going to be dark you can't see the graphite here anymore um, and I'm just I'm going to map in this dark dark shadow so I think this is coming up to a point where I'm going to be finishing the tutorial um, we've got quite a nice part of her done um today and then i think what's going to happen is the next part will be to finish off the ear another part to do the rest of her neck and the ear here and then one more part to do just her chest and collar um so i'm estimating three four more parts <sighs> hopefully <laughs> hopefully guys um that's the plan obviously it just depends how long it takes to um actually draw her out um right so again i'm coming in with a burnt sienna and i'm following the fur direction Mapping in all that fur. Uh, 
Um, I'm also going to come in with the Caput Martin over the top of that burnt sienna. And then we're going to go to the red violet. So with um, this part, we have a dark shadow showing. So I'm just going to bring the red violet down and use this to create that dark shadow. And this is what, like the lip fold. And this area is going to be dark. Bringing that up there and in here. So I'm just using this to sort of map in like those dark shadows or where they're going to be, the dark shadows. Um, and I'm going to bring the red violet just down here a little bit for now. Um, okay, I'm then going to take the walnut brown, go over this red violet area with the walnut brown again some dark areas coming in here And then I'm just going to take the Payne's Grey, especially in this little triangular, half a triangle <laughs> section. Just see just how much that Payne's Grey really darkens this underline. And I'm going to take the red violet again, following that fur direction. Go over again with the burnt sienna. Okay, um, I'm then going to take the walnut brown and let me just put this piece of paper down. Um, and then the Payne's Grey just to help blend out and add some detail um, followed by the Van Dyke Brown along here right um, grab your burnt umber and this area is going to be um, burnt umber. Right up to that edge of that ear with the burnt umber. And then going down with it. Um, then the red violet, so we're getting close to this. We we'll have to get a new red violet out soon. I don't think there's much of this one left. <laughs> um, 
um, and then the walnut brown over the top. Quite hard pressure because I want this to um, be dark. So this part of the bottom of her lip is um, going to come together once we start bringing in the neck um, but I don't want to do that just yet because um, I want to do this part with the ear um, and then back to the burnt umber. What I am going to do though is, um, sorry I keep moving this. I'm just going to take my slice tool and I'm just going to lightly bring it over the top of this lip. It's not removing much pigment. I don't want them to be bright white. I just want like little hair details. I don't want it to be like, oh look, here's a load of white hair. I just want little hair details. And then like here, there'd be a longer whisker, so that bit can be white. Um, and then like if I added in some of the whiskers here, this area here is white. All it's all I've done is just added in some little details with this slice tool. So if you're using your tape, just use the tape. And it's just gonna sort of add a little extra detail. Um and then like here, um take the Payne's grey. And then if you've done too much, you can just come back in with that Payne's Grey in between the slice marks. Um, if, oh, if you wanted to go over your tape or your slice marks with a white pencil, like for the whiskers, we can. And then if I've done that, like that one went a bit wide, so I'm just going to take that walnut brown and I'm just going to come over here with the walnut brown, just sort that one out and sort that one out. So you can just go back over areas um, with those tools and they will really um, help you bring that piece together. Um, so going back in with my burnt umber here. Again, this area is going to be over the um, ear, so actually that needs to come that way a bit more. Um, and the burnt sienna. And this part of the fur is going to be a bit longer, so I've used longer pencil strokes. And I will sort of create the effect that I want with this part of the fur once I've got the bottom half of her neck in. Uh, just going back to that Payne's, Payne's Grey. Um, and then my slice tool just to sort of add in some of those hairs that are coming this way. Just adding in extra details from here. I 
and adding in extra highlights where we need them. Okay, let me zoom you out. So here is our little spaniel puppy so far. We will be working on the rest of her ear in the next part. Um, but we're almost there, guys. We almost have a little spaniel puppy. I hope you've enjoyed this one so far. Um, I'm really enjoying seeing her come to life now. Um, she looks really curious, and that's kind of the look we're going for. Um, I, If you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe. Like the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.